What is going on, Internet? Hail to the Redskins. This is JD coming at you with another video from Redskins Rain. It'll be a quick one. I'm just going to comment on some things that I heard today. Listen to Redskins Talk with J.P. Finley. Um, there was a website out there that goes over, and what they do is it's a... They, what they do is they have adjusted numbers, adjusted interception rating. And what that means is... Okay, so let's say I'm a quarterback and I throw 10 interceptions, but I, it should have been 19, but guys dropped touchdown. They dropped the catch that should have been caught if they were just had better hands. Um, so that's basically what it is. They just And, and they also count, um, they deduct the interceptions that aren't the quarterback's fault, okay? So that being said, um, I'm going to go over just a little bit of information about our quarterback last year. Our quarterback last year had 13 interceptions in the season. Which, honestly, not too bad. It wasn't horrible. But here's where um, it kind of gets, gets, uh, gets me. Uh, he had nine interception, or, uh, dropped interceptions. So he had nine of them extra that should have been interceptions if they were caught properly. Okay, so that brings his numbers up to, to uh, 22. Okay. And then they deducted two more. They deducted two. They subtracted two because he had two that were tipped by his receivers and they fell into the defender's hands. Okay, so if you're kind of doing math at home, what that means is he had 13. You add nine because he had nine that should have been caught, but they weren't. And then you add, you subtract another uh, two because two of them weren't his fault. They bounced off Kirk's hands and, like, right into a defender's hands. Or they, it was thrown by Kirk, bounced off receiver's hands right into another receiver's hands. Um, or defender's hands, I'm sorry. So he had 20, it would have been considered 20 interceptions. That's not counting his fumbles, but 20 interceptions. If you had to guess, um, I'm going to give you a chance to kind of guess, what do you think that ranks amongst, um, among all the quarterbacks last year? If you guessed last, you're pretty close because he was second to last or second to worst in the league when it comes to an interception to just interception level. I mean, when it comes to interceptions, he was seventh worst. Okay, he was uh, he had 13 interceptions. That's seventh worst in the league, and he was tied with about two or three other people. So he's seventh worst in the league in interceptions. So he had seventh most, but he had second most when you adjust his numbers based on tips and based on what should have been interception, intercepted. So all the Kirk lovers out there, um, whenever I say that we got lucky that this didn't happen or that didn't happen, um, just know that the advanced analytics actually side with those of us who actually a little bit. Um, ob objective when it comes to analyzing our quarterback and I don't just um, I don't want to call them dick riders but big Kirk Cousins fans so if they had been caught you'd be looking at a quarterback with like 27 touchdowns or 25 touchdowns to um, 20 interceptions which is not very good that's, that's getting up in Eli Manning interception numbers for God's sakes okay so um, I'm going to flip the coin on that and go to the other quarterback. Our other quarterback last year, uh, the quarterback we have now, Alex Smith, who I'm just going to be, I'm not going to lie, I'm a little biased because I, because I like him. I like, I've always liked Alex Smith. He's a winner. That's the most important thing to me is that he wins. And he gets to the playoffs, which um, I'm not going, not going to take shots at Kirk. But um, the real benefit with having Alex Smith, Alex Smith only had five interceptions last year. And he only had adjusted, it would have been five, uh, five interceptions that were dropped. So 10 total. That puts him in the bottom, I think it's like bottom 10 among quarterbacks. And that's not even, that's, I mean, he played all games too. So he only would have had 10 if, if for the just, that's half as many turnovers with about the same amount of interceptions and just as many yards. I mean, it's, it's kind of a no-brainer whenever they traded for Alex Smith and everyone was like, oh, we got rid of Kendall Full. Yeah, if you get rid of Kendall if you could trade in Kirk for a quarterback that uh, is more mobile, okay, first off, he's more mobile. Um, he turns the ball over less. He doesn't fumble the ball as much. You can run more run RPO, run pass options. He's actually was way more, like, he had better completion percentage last year. And I know everyone's going to be like, oh, receivers. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to debunk the whole receiver argument when I start doing my game film analysis, which look out for the first one. It's going to be happening on Wednesday. Okay, so... Um, that's my video. I just want to talk about that. I heard that today, and I was very interested in that stat. I um, also want to say that in the same podcast I listened to from J.P. Finley, um, I thought it was very interesting that we actually 
like everyone like ripped us for getting Lando Scandrick. Lando Scandrick actually is like one of the top, like the top corners in run defense, fifth best when it comes to help stop helping stop the run. I mean, it's very subjective. You don't know what they're measuring that by, but none of the, like uh, Josh Norman was like number one, and Lando Scandrick was like number, excuse me, number five. So Dunbar. Kendall Fuller, um, Breland, none of them were even in the top 60 or something like that. So it's very surprising to me that that, that might have been one of the factors that came into actually um, getting him on the team. He's actually pretty solid helping stop the run. His run support is better than anyone else that we could have gotten. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, not not I think Lander Scandrick is going to be a great, like he's going to, I think it will impact. I just don't think he's going to be, like, the guy that's going to, like, carry us to, like, he may, he may impact the game to the point where he'll make a stop or something or make a tackle in the backfield when we need it. But he's not going to be someone that, you know, he's not he's not going to be a game breaker. He's not going to, like, get three interceptions in one game or something. He's not he's not a, a, a Norman or a D'Angelo Hall or anything like that. So, but that's my video. It's very short, very sweet. Um, give me a like and share and subscribe. Um, I'm almost at 100 followers, which is going to be great because once I get to 100, you know, I'm gonna st I, once I get more videos going, it's, it, it, the snow, the, it's going to be a snowball. Let's do my game film analysis. It's going to have a lot more videos to put out, a lot more breakdown. And then you're going to see the game the way I see the game. Okay, so maybe you just won't agree with a lot of things, in my analysis of things, how I see things. But the main point is, this is, this, is, this is my thing, man. This is my opinions. This is my. This is how I see the game of football. And you may not agree with me, but you're at least going to understand my point of view. So, and that's really all we can do about each, with each other. We, we don't always have to agree on everything, but if you at least understand each other, that just makes the world a lot better. So, my name is JD. Like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, um, Redskins Ranter. Okay. I'm going to try to link it to this account so all my video uploads will be on there as well. All right? Take it easy. Hail to the residents. See you.